Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to See Mindy Mom, welcome to my kitchen. Today I am sharing with you three really easy recipes for your Super Bowl party or any other gathering that you might be hosting. The day that I am filming this, we are actually having a few friends over to celebrate my husband's birthday. So I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to share some recipes for you that I can get to you before the Super Bowl. These are actually all dip recipes. I have a main course recipe, an appetizer recipe, and a dessert recipe as well. Plus we have lots of other finger foods and different things we're gonna be putting out. So I'll try to get a shot of the entire spread. And even though we kind of have the Super Bowl in mind with this video, I think it would be fitting for any kind of gathering that you might be hosting or even just a fun like Friday night thing that you can do with your family. And I'm also very excited to be collabing with another really great YouTuber. I have had the opportunity to collab with some awesome ladies over the past few months. And today I am doing this video along with McKinsey over at Carla McKinsey. If you are not familiar with her channel, be sure that you go and check it out after you watch this video and let her know that I sent you. McKinsey does a lot of cooking videos and shop with me videos. She especially does some really great videos about what's new in various and sundry stores like Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target, and many others. She is also going to be preparing some yummy dip recipes, which can be good for your Super Bowl party or any other gathering or family meal that you might be hosting. So again, be sure after you watch this video, check out the link in the description box. Go and have a look at her channel, watch her video, and tell her that I said hello. We're going to start with the main course recipe, which is a crock pot French dip recipe. Yes, I'm still sticking with the dip theme, but I'm kind of taking my own spin on it here, and we're going to have mini French dip sandwiches. Per the usual, I will leave any recipes that inspired me linked in the description box below, but I also usually, you know, make some adjustments and changes, so I'll take you through how I I am making things. I actually got the French dip sandwiches or the meat for the French dip sandwiches going in the crock pot earlier this morning so that the meat could cook low and slow all day. For this recipe, it's basically like a dump and go crock pot recipe, which I absolutely love. I am using a two and a half pound rump roast. You could use a chuck roast if you wanted. One can of condensed French onion soup and one can of beef consomme. And just a note, Beef consomme is not the same as beef broth. It has some extra ingredients, including gelatin added to it. So you need to look for beef consomme, not beef broth. I'm gonna use a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire, a few cloves of garlic, which I will use my garlic press to mince into the crock pot. And the original recipe calls for a Guinness beer. What I had was something similar that came in my beer advent calendar from Aldi that we actually haven't finished drinking all of beers. We're not big Guinness fans or big, you know, stout beer fans in this this house so this will be a great way to use this but I only used half of that because the original recipe called for like a four pound roast and my roast is only about two and a half pounds so I got that all in the crock pot earlier this morning it was about eight o'clock and I actually started it out on high for about 60 to 90 minutes and then I bumped my crock pot down to low because I really would have liked to get it started if I was going to cook it on low all day just a little bit sooner but that's a little trick that I use if I feel like it's not going to be quite done if I cook it only on low or if I'm short on time is I will cook it on high for just a little bit to kind of give it a head start and then bump that slow cooker down to low. The beauty of this recipe is that that meat is going to cook low and slow for another eight to nine hours. And then it is going to be fork tender and the juices that it produces, the juices that it produces. <laughs> okay. I'm a poet and didn't know it. And the broth or the juice that it renders is actually going to be the au jus for the French dip sandwiches. So Super easy. These are the other ingredients that are gonna finish out the little mini sandwiches. I just have some provolone slices. And then I have these deli rolls. They're kind of like sub rolls, but I'm actually going to slice these lengthwise. They may already be sliced lengthwise. And I'm gonna also cut them in half so that they will just make little mini sandwiches. Then we'll toast these with the cheese and be able to put the meat on it and have the au jus for dipping them in. So I'll plate those up whenever the sandwiches are done and you can see how they turn out. I wanna share a dessert dessert dip and it is for an M&M brownie batter dip. Does that don't just sound amazing? <laughs> the ingredients for this are pretty simple. I'm going to make it ahead of time so I can stick it in the fridge. I'm going to make one little adjustment to the recipe that I think is going to help make it stretch a little bit farther and also make it maybe not quite quite so rich as the original recipe. So I will leave the original one linked in the description box down below. Uh, let me show you what I'm gonna use to make this. This is what I'm using for the brownie batter dip. I'm using one stick of butter softened, 
one block or eight ounces of cream cheese, one box of fudge brownie mix, a quarter cup of milk, one cup of powdered sugar, which is about all I have left in there. I'm so glad. One little bitty container of M&Ms that I'm gonna sprinkle on at the end. And I am actually adding this in order to kind of maybe make it be not quite so rich. There's a lot of rich ingredients in this. So I thought this would kind of help make it a little fluffier and maybe spread out some of the richer ingredients across the recipe. So we'll see how it turns out. I started by mixing my butter and my cream cheese together by creaming the butter and the cream cheese. And you guys can laugh a little at me trying to make sure that the bowl doesn't slide all over the counter. That's what I get for not getting out my KitchenAid mixer. And then I added the powdered sugar and I just creamed that together with the butter and the cream cheese mixture. And then I added in my milk as well and just very slowly mixed that. I actually mixed it by hand a little bit before I turned my mixer back on because I didn't want it to splatter everywhere. And then I added my brownie mix and the original recipe recipe calls for two cups, which is what I thought was in a box of brownie mix, but it's actually closer to four cups that's in a box of brownie mix. So not going to lie, I just kind of eyeballed it. This doesn't have to bake. It's just a dip that I'm going to chill and there's nothing raw in it. So I ended up using just about a little over half the bag. And like I said, I just started adding it. I just kept adding the brownie mix until it was the taste and the consistency that I wanted it to be. Now I added some Cool Whip, one eight ounce container of Cool Whip to this recipe because I felt like it was going to be way too rich without it. And I'm so glad that I did that because I felt like it was still a pretty rich dessert. It was almost like a mousse, even though I added the Cool Whip to it. So I popped that into the fridge and then when I was ready to serve it, I just put it into a different bowl and then I sprinkled the M&Ms on top and I served it with some sliced strawberries and some of those little Pizzelle cookies that you can buy um, lots of different places. I got mine at Aldi. You could also probably use Nola wafers, graham crackers, pineapple, bananas. This was really delicious. I'm so glad I made it and I'll probably probably be making it again. If you are coming over here from Mackenzie's channel, I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome. I am Mindy. Look, my coffee cup even says it. <laughs> I am often holding this or another coffee cup in my videos because I tend to sip on this at least throughout the morning, if not most of the day. In fact, it's 3.06 right now. And um, I'm about to probably brew myself another cup of coffee, even though I think I've already had two or three for today. I think that's something that Mackenzie and I have in common because she's a big coffee fan too. But I'm married to my husband, Daniel. We are going on 17 years of marriage. We have three children who are 12, 9, and 8, and most of my videos revolve around what I am doing in my kitchen to save money, to save time, to make life easier, to make delicious meals that I hope are realistic and relatable. So if you have time to take a look around, I hope you will, and if you decide that you like what you see, be sure that you hit that subscribe button and maybe click that little notification bell so that you know when new videos are posting because life gets pretty crazy and I'm not always posting videos at the same time on the same days. But I'm very glad that you're here. Thanks for watching. For the the appetizer dip, I am doing a creamy pizza dip. So let me show you the ingredients that I'm using for this, but I'm also going to give some ideas for ways that you could dress this up in a different way. I'm going to keep it really basic for what I'm doing tonight, but I think there are lots of possibilities with this recipe. For the pizza dip, I am not doubling the recipe, but I'm one and a halvesing it, if that makes sense. So instead of just the single recipe, I'm, I'm making like plus half more. I'm probably not making any sense, but I think you get what I mean not doubling it, but multiplying it just by half. So I have about 12 ounces of cream cheese here. That's one and a half blocks, one cup or four ounces of shredded parm. And I actually use like a block of parm that I shredded myself. Same with the mozzarella. This is two cups or eight ounces of shredded mozzarella. And I shred this myself. I find that when I buy it in block form and I shred it myself, it just melts better. I have one package of pepperonis. I'm going to use the little mini pepperonis because I thought that would work really well for this dip. And I need three quarters of a cup of pizza sauce. And you guys, this is actually, can you tell, a little container from Little Caesars. We had Little Caesars pizza last week and we had one container of sauce from the Crazy Bread. And I thought instead of throwing that away, I think I'm just going to stick this in the freezer because it might come in handy for something. And you know what? It does. I actually need just about this much sauce for the dip. So that'll be great. I can use that up and I think it'll be really tasty with this. I started out by spreading my cream cheese evenly across the bottom of a glass baking dish. This is actually a glass pie plate. And I actually had to pop my cream cheese into the microwave for a few seconds because it wasn't quite soft enough to spread out. You'll want to spread it out evenly across the bottom there. And then I'm going to make a layer of cheese. So I'm sprinkling half of the Parmesan that I shredded up and half of the mozzarella that I shredded up. And I'm just going to sprinkle that evenly across the layer of cream cheese on the bottom. I'm using the little mini pepperonis because I think that they're easier to distribute 
distribute evenly across the pie plate. If you are wanting to use regular pepperonis, you might just wanna chop those up before you sprinkle them on top of the cheese. Then I am just layering the tomato sauce, the pizza sauce over the top of that. I wish I'd used just a little bit more tomato sauce, but it still turned out okay. And then I'm sprinkling the rest of the cheese on top of that and finishing it off with another layer of little mini pepperonis. I'm gonna pop that into a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until the cheese is all melty and it's kind of bubbly throughout. You will want to make this pretty close to when you're wanting to serve it because of course it won't stay hot forever. And of course, be careful because hot cheese, you know, it'll burn the roof of our mouths if we're not careful. For the pizza dip, you can go a couple of different directions. I did buy one of these little Italian loaves. You could just get like a French bread um, and I'm gonna slice it lengthways and then I'm gonna make garlic toast and then slice them in little bitty slices. But I also picked these up. They're just little bagel chips. I found these at Aldi. I thought these would be good for dipping as well. I looked for green peppers. I thought that would be a really good thing to slice up and use as like a veggie dipper for that, but they didn't have any. So this is what we're going with for tonight. I really enjoyed all three of the dip recipes that I tried for this video, so it's really hard for me to decide a favorite, but I definitely think these French dips are the front runner and something that I will certainly make again because they were so easy. I just dumped everything into the crock pot and let it cook all day, and then that roast was fork tender. You can see that I'm just using one fork and I'm able to shred it up. So I shred up the meat for that, and then I put my little rolls onto a cookie sheet, top them with some of the provolone, and I put them under the broiler for about 60 seconds to two minutes, one to two minutes, melted the cheese. And then I just plated up the sandwiches by putting a little bit of that meat on top of the roll and having a little ramekin of the au jus there for people to dip their sandwiches in. And oh my goodness, these were fantastic for being so easy. Like there was hardly any work involved in this. These were so good. They were so flavorful and delicious. Several people went back for seconds on this. So I definitely think this is gonna be something that I will make again again and again in the future. And you know, not a bad party food if you ask me. Sandwiches, roast beef sandwiches, hard to go wrong with that. I will leave any recipes that inspired me linked in the description box below. Per the usual, I tend to take a lot of liberties with things and just make it work for our tastes and our preferences and the things that I have on hand or the amount of time that I have to prepare things. So hopefully there are some good ideas for you here and something that you can use for your next gathering. All right, you guys, that's what I have for you. I hope that gives you some ideas and that this was enjoyable and fun to watch. And again, thank you so much to Mackenzie for asking me to collab with her on this fantastic idea. Be sure to go and check out her channel. It's linked in the description box below. And I'll be sure to check in again with another video soon. Bye.